There used to be an expression, a stranger is just a friend you haven't met yet, but not anymore. All the news of child molesting and abductions has scared parents. Tonight we'll wrap up our series on child predators by looking at how parents can street-proof their children without robbing them of their innocence. Kelly McLugan of CBC Vancouver reports. around and she wasn't there and I called for her and she wouldn't uh, Absolute sheer panicked feeling it's like the bottom just drops out of your heart and your stomach panic your, your, your stomach goes to your throat and you just choke I didn't know if uh, someone had walked off with her that was my name somebody must have kidnapped her when you find them your your whole life stops Almost every parent can describe it, the feeling when a child disappears, even if it's just for a few seconds. Statistically, the chances of a stranger abducting a child are remote. But if the numbers don't support parents' fears, they don't erase them either. If somebody's dead, you can't change it. You know, And I think that way all the time. My kids have to be protected because the worst possible scenario might happen. Help! Police! Stranger, you're not my dog! Though experts insist there is no hard evidence that street proofing is effective, from time to time... She kicked him uh, four or five times, was able to get free. There are stories that suggest it might be. A man standing beside a We also hear stories of attempted abductions. He asked me if I wanted to give him a hug. ...that later turn out to be misunderstandings. It's a tricky issue for any parent. Psychologist John Yule has interviewed sex offenders and victims of abuse. We don't want them to go off with one of these molesters, but we want children to be open. We want them to be um, able to talk to people and able to relate and not feel fear every time a stranger approaches them. These are just young children. It really infuriates me that their innocence has to be taken away from them. But it's that innocence that can make kids so vulnerable. Kids are unbelievable. Psychiatrist Roy O'Shaughnessy. They have these uh, extraordinary ideas about their own power and ability, and they think that all they have to do, even at the age of five or six, would be to hit the man and run, and they could get away with it. And they have no conception of, of the limitations of their own abilities. And, and you've really got to talk to them about that. Um, but how? Teaching kids, working through them, practicing it is critical. Just telling them about it is useless. I get out a map. I can't find anything. I see this guy walking down the street. I say, hey, man, this street proofing program for kids delivers its message with extraordinary candor. I can't even find the video station and I can't find anything. <laughs> I simply walk towards Darren and ask him some simple, direct, easy questions. He was concentrating on my map and he was concentrating on the words that were coming out of my mouth. He forgot completely about his safety. It's easy for kids to get caught off guard. In a series of tests organized with the help of parents and school officials, even kids who'd been warned by their parents about the tricks predators can use were deceived by this one. Can I get you to hold this dog for a minute, please? I just have to put, uh, get my, my, uh, my, my car open there. Just, uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, do you want to just put her in there? It's impossible for parents to rehearse all the tricks a predator might use. It can be more effective to talk about general rules, rules kids remember more easily. My opinion, adults and teenagers should never ask you for help, directions or questions. If they do, you don't have to be rude to them or mean, but we think you should just say, and this is a rule, no, go ask another adult. The rules are helpful without being excessively alarming. And by the end of this demonstration, it's the rules that remain with the kids. I realized a lot of things that could be dangerous that I've been doing, so. Like what? Um, I normally talk to a lot of, like, strangers. I usually walk, sometimes I walk home alone, and I, I'll, I'll just ask my friends if, like, I can walk with them. When should parents begin talking to their kids about these issues? When you've got a kid under five, you really can't leave those kids alone, uh, unsupervised in, in the streets. I mean, I think that's just obvious. Uh, when you've got seven, eight, nine-year-old kids, they're in a much better age group where they can understand these things and, and can react. Above all, parents should try to keep those talks about stranger danger in perspective. Fact is, children are at much greater risk for injury or death in the family car than at the hands of a child predator. Keeping that in mind won't eliminate the long, anxious seconds when a child suddenly slips from sight. But in the long run, it may help parents strike the balance between protecting children and preserving childhood.
Kelly McLugan, CBC News.